Next, Mr. Chameleon and the curious murder of Clubfoot Louie. Tonight, we again present the famous Mr. Chameleon of Central Headquarters in his most famous cases of crime and murder, brought to you by the makers of genuine Bayer Aspirin. You all know, of course, who Mr. Chameleon is. He is the famed detective of Central Headquarters, known as the man of many faces because of his frequent use of impersonation or disguise in solving a tough case and bringing a killer to justice. Tonight he appears both as himself, Mr. Chameleon, and in an especially clever and effective disguise. Tonight we give you Mr. Chameleon in The Curious Murder of Clubfoot Louis. <laughs> New Yorkers are accustomed to almost everything. It takes a lot to surprise them and make them look around. But at nine o'clock at night in the West 40s, at one of the busiest intersections of the city, the crowded street is thrown into a panic as two shots ring out and a man falls to the sidewalk. Hey. <laughs> Who shot him? It was a man in a brown hat. No, it wasn't. It was someone in that car that drove away. Where are the police? Police! Police! Look, there's a delivery van pulling up. Good heavens! They're putting the body in a van. They're going to take the dead man away before the police get here. And a little later at Central Headquarters, we find Mr. Chameleon, the great detective, sitting quietly listening to the commissioner of police. And the commissioner is saying angrily, uh, Who do they think they are, these vicious hoodlums? What makes them think they can get away with a murder like that, Chameleon? Well, I noticed they got away with the body, too, Commissioner. It's pretty difficult to convict anyone of murder without the corpus delicti. Yeah, but we know who was murdered. It was Clubfoot Louie. There were enough witnesses to the shooting to verify that. And the policeman who saw the murder car make its getaway swear that Lugo Dominic was in the car. Well, I don't doubt that. There's been trouble in Dominic's mob for some time. I've been expecting lucky Lugo to blow his top. You know, that rabbit foot he wears and all those good luck charms, they can't protect him against his own excitability. Dominic is a killer and a ruthless gang leader, yet he turns pale when a black cat crosses his path. Well, that's very interesting, Chameleon, but it won't help us find Clubfoot Louie's body. It might, it might. Never know. Hmm? Commissioner, I am convinced that Dominic was the killer. Having a fast delivery van snatch up the body. Very clever. Sounds like his handiwork. And you're right, we can't let that happen on the streets of New York. Where are you going? Pay a call on our friend Lugo Dominic. He has a new house, you know, in the West 60s. I understand it's quite magnificent. He even has a greenhouse. I also understand, and you may have heard this too, that he has a very attractive secretary named Clara Horlick. <laughs> But as Chameleon stands in the center of Dominic's living room, he decides that magnificent is too feeble a term for it. Overpowering is more accurate. And he smiles with grim amusement as the huge figure of Lugo Dominic enters the room. Ah, good morning, Mr. Dominic. Uh, quite a place that you have here. What do you want, Chameleon? And the flowers, those roses, really charming. How do you manage to grow them in your greenhouse? I've tried so hard myself. Listen, Chameleon, you're not here to talk about flowers. And I'm a busy man. Ah, unfortunate, isn't it, that in the rush of a busy life, we so often fail to see the beautiful. Come on, cut the fancy talk. If you've got anything on your chest, spill it. Sad about Clubfoot Louis, wasn't it? Cut off in his prime. Oh, that's it. Oh, the guy may not be dead at all. Anybody find his body? The first time I've ever heard of the angels calling for a man's soul and taking his body along as well. 
Or perhaps you don't know anything of the habits of angels, Dominic. Now get this straight, Mr. Busybody. Chameleon is the name. Chameleon of Central Headquarters. If you think you can intimidate me, take another guess. I'm telling you I know nothing about this guy Clubfoot Louis. Oh, of course, of course. And I didn't really come here to talk about Clubfoot Louis. Huh? I hear that you've gone very fancy and hired a secretary. Her name is Clara Hawley. And I came to warn you about her. She's a crook. A crook? So I'm a crook, am I? She's also an eavesdropper. How do you do, Clara? Dominic, who is this character? Never met the guy in my life. My last. He's a liar. What do you mean by telling lies about me? Nobody can say anything about me. Nobody. Well, of course, your conduct at the state prison for women was really exemplary. So he's a cop, that's it. A nasty, sneaking cop. Watch out, Clara. This cop is Chameleon of Central Headquarters. He's snooping around about Clubfoot Louis' murder. Well, he can't pin that on me. Get out. Get out! With pleasure. But before I go, I should like to say that a number of women who have graduated from that prison have graduated to murder. You and Lugo Dominic will be seeing much more of me. Goodbye. Well, baby... You sure showed that cop you weren't afraid of him. Yeah. But I am, Lugo. Deathly afraid. There's something about Chameleon. I'll get it. Hello? Oh, just a minute. It's McGrath. Hello, Mac. What? When? That Chameleon was just here. Well, sure, sure, but don't get excited. There's no body, is there? Without a body, you haven't got the murder. But the cops can't do anything to you. Sure, I'll give you protection. I've always given you protection. I... Wait a minute. Mac! How do you like that? McGrath hung up on me. McGrath, my right-hand man, the guy that thinks I'm always right. What happened, Dominic? I was picked up by Chameleon's sidekick, Detective Sergeant Dave Arnold. They threatened him with some robbery charge he thought was dropped long ago. He scared silly, swore at me, and demanded protection. He acted like he thought I couldn't protect my boys no longer. So you questioned McGrath, did you, Detective Sergeant Dave Arnold? Yes, Mr. Chameleon, but I didn't make a dent in him. Oh? Oh. He didn't even bat an eyelash. Well, don't be too sure. He might put up a front with you and talk quite differently to Lugo Dominic. Well, here we are. This is Clubfoot Louis' basement apartment. Quite a contrast to Mr. Dominic's grey stone mansion. Well, Louis' wife should be home. Though whether she let us in, she usually slams the door in my face. Who is it? Oh, Mr. Chameleon, come in, come in. Well, thank you, Maggie. Uh, This is a very pleasant surprise. I know, I know. But I've been waiting for you. I've been praying that you'd come. Who's this? Uh, This is Detective Sergeant Dave Arnold. Oh, good, good. Uh, Follow me, please, into the kitchen. Thank you. Uh, This isn't some sort of a trap, is it? Oh, no, no, no trap. I, I have something for you. Something that my husband, Louie, wanted me to give you. Maggie... Was Louis on bad terms with Dominic? Bad? They were worse than that. Louis wanted to go straight, but Dominic was after him. After him all the time to to do one more job for him. You haven't found my poor Louis? No. No, not yet. Of course, he may not be dead. He's dead, all right. For days, he's been afraid for his life. That's why... Look here, Mr. Chameleon. Look. Look, this is for you. What? Phonograph record? Yes, a, a record Louis had made only last week. I'll play it for you. Listen. It's a very bad machine, but but listen. If I die, Lugo Dominic murdered me. He killed me. I don't know when, but if I die, he killed me. Lugo Dominic killed me. Maggie, this is wonderful. This is just what I needed. Um, Give that record to me. This is the smartest thing that your husband, Clubfoot Louie, ever did. Mr. Chameleon, 
You mean you can arrest Lugo Dominic for my Louis murder? No, no, no. This record of Louis' voice proves nothing except that he was afraid of being murdered. In fact, until we find his body, we can't even prove there was a murder. But this record will help. It'll help a good deal, Maggie. And um, there's one more thing that you can do to help me. Oh, anything, anything. Did Louis have any unusual characteristics, like, um, well, like uh, singing in the bathtub? You know what I mean? Yes. He used to drive me nearly crazy with his whistling. Oh? He was always whistling that, that pop, uh, pop goes the weasel. Nothing else. Just that one thing he whistled all the time. Thank you again, Maggie. Again, you've helped me very much. Doing up. It's only five o'clock in the morning. I thought I heard someone downstairs was whistling. Listen. You hear that? Yeah. Somebody's whistling. Pop goes the weasel. Then I didn't dream it. Where is it coming from? Where? Hello? This is Dominic. The cops speak to Benny. But they can't. They can't do that. Okay, okay. I'll call you back. And tell McGrath to keep his shirt on. Clara, the cops just picked up another one of my boys on a charge of loitering. How do you like that? It's that dirty cop chameleon. He's back of it. You're telling me. Every time that phone rings, I jump a mile. Clara. Clara, do you hear a voice? Yeah. Yes, I do. Where is it coming from? From outside the house, I think, Dominic. Let's look. This is one of Chameleon's tricks. Maybe he's around in one of his disguises. That's what he does, you know. You don't have to tell me. Listen. There's someone outside the door. It's Chameleon. So you're snooping around again, are you? Huh? Yes, you. I know you, Chameleon. Are you nuts on the garbage, man? Don't try to kid me. I've had enough of this Chameleon. Hey, wait a minute. Keep away from Dominic, me. Dominic, wait. That isn't Chameleon. You know, I tell you it is, Clara. No, no, look. There's Chameleon walking down the street. He's coming here to see us at five o'clock in the morning. Now, look, I'll stay here and meet him. You beat it, Dominic. Well, well, Clara, up so early in the morning. Listen, you cheap copper, you can't come in. Mr. Dominic's not seeing anybody. It's only five in the morning. Well, the house is all lit up. What's the matter, Clara? Have you and Dominic got insomnia? Why don't you leave us alone? What have we ever done to you? What have you done to Clubfoot Louie? That's more to the point. We haven't done anything. You haven't even found his body, have you? Clara, let me handle this. Listen, Chameleon, you've got the nerve to come here at this hour of the morning. Well, I thought you were up, Dominic. I could have sworn that you were up. Besides, you're about to have another visitor. Here he comes now. Who? One of your henchmen, McGrath. McGrath? What does he want? I can't imagine, but he looks as if he were in a very bad humor. Hello, McGrath. Hello, Chameleon. Clara, Dominic. Oh, quite a little gathering. What's it all about? What do you mean, Mac? Stop stalling, Dominic. What's Chameleon doing here? You making a deal with him? A deal? With the cops? Shut up, Clara. Mac, uh, Chameleon was just passing by. <laughs> Five o'clock in the morning? Yes, it's true. I'll bet. I've been tailing him. I thought he was coming here to see you, Dominic. I knew you'd try to make a deal with him, and all the boys think so, too. Mac, that ain't so. You know better than that. We've been together for years. You know you can trust me. I'm not so sure anymore. Well, you'd better be sure. I'm still head man. I made you, Mac. Just remember that. I made you. Where do you think you're going, Chameleon? Why, Clara, I am simply being tactful. That seems to be a very private sort of quarrel. You rotten troublemaker. Why, Clara, don't be disagreeable. Good night, or rather good morning. I'll be seeing you. Well, Mr. Chameleon, 
How's it going? It's going fine, Dave. It's going just the way I want it to. Clubfoot Louis's corpse is still among the missing, and I still can't pin his murder on Lugo Dominic. But we're getting warmer, Detective Sergeant Arnold. We're getting warmer. Mr. Chameleon and the Curious Murder of Clubfoot Louie continues in just a moment. Your own doctor will tell you that there's no reason in the world why you should suffer from the painful symptoms of a cold, especially when it's so easy to quickly relieve such symptoms as that headachey feeling and muscular aches and pains. Just take two Bayer aspirin tablets with a full glass of water and you get fast relief because Bayer aspirin is ready to go to work in two seconds. And if your cold is accompanied by a sore throat, gargle with three Bayer aspirin tablets dissolved in one-third of a glass of water. This highly potent medicinal gargle almost instantly soothes the tender throat membranes, relieves pain and irritation. So when you're suffering from painful cold symptoms, take two Bayer aspirin tablets with a full glass of water, and then to relieve accompanying sore throat, dissolve three Bayer tablets in one-third of a glass of water and gargle. When you buy, ask for Bayer Aspirin, not just for aspirin alone. Get the 100-tablet bottle and you get Bayer Aspirin tablets for less than a penny apiece. And now back to Mr. Chameleon and the curious murder of Clubfoot Louie. Clubfoot Louie has been murdered. Mr. Chameleon is sure of it. But he is also sure that Lugo Dominic, the gang leader, is the murderer. And since the dead man's corpse cannot be found, no murder charge can be made. It is one of the most amazing situations in Mr. Chameleon's amazing career. But he has his own method of wearing Dominic down, and those methods are beginning to take effect. And now the next night in Dominic's ornate house, the gang leader is finding that once again he can't sleep. And he restlessly paces the floor of his library. The dirty bums, deserting me like rats, deserting a sinking ship. Only I'm not a sinking ship. I'm Lugo Dominic the Lucky. Lucky Lugo, that's me, and I'm not going to forget it. No one can scare me, no one. Did you want me, Dominic? Oh. For Pete's sake, Clara, don't do that again. Coming up behind me, you startled me. Sorry, I thought you called me. Well, I didn't. You mean you were talking to yourself? Dominic, you're not losing your nerve, are you? No, I'm not losing my nerve. No. Of course not. What time is it? Nearly midnight. Why? You expecting someone? Uh, well, they never know when that detective chameleon's going to show up. Seems to be everywhere all the time. Gives me no peace. Ah, he's just a dumb copper. Shall I answer then? Uh, I'm sick of answering the telephone. And every time it rings, it's bad news. Some more of my boys picked up by the cops. McGrath yelling his head off. Take the receiver off the hook and leave it off. Yeah, but Dominic... Take it off, Clara. Okay. Gee, you are getting nervous. And shut up. I'm paying you to be my secretary. Not shoot your mouth off. Listen, Clara. There is that voice again. Do, do hear it, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, I hear it. All the time, getting louder. Where is it? Where is it coming from? Chameleon is back of it. How could he be dominant? I don't know, I don't know, but... There he is now. Maybe it's McGrath. No, it's Chameleon. Every time the phone rings, every time the doorbell rings, it's always Chameleon in some form or other. Look, Dominic, take it easy. Leave me alone. Well, don't blow your top. And get out of here, will you? Go in the other room, I'll handle this guy. Okay. Just keep out, keep out, that's all. Well? Hello. Well, you know me, Dominic? Harry Marvin of the Chicago mob. Oh, yes. Yes, sure, Marvin. I know you. Come on in. At first, I didn't recognize you. Those dark glasses you're wearing. <laughs> yeah, I got eye trouble. Besides, it's five years since I seen you in Detroit. Remember that girl I shot up for you on the waterfront? No, I don't remember. Oh, come on. Now, Dominic, stop kidding. You don't have to be careful in front of me. I'm one of the boys. Sure, uh, sure. 
Uh, McGrath sent me over here tonight. Said you needed a new bodyguard since your mob's been running out on you. Too bad you had to bump off Clubfoot Louie. Only I didn't. You didn't what? You stupid moron. Did you really think you could trick me into saying I killed Clubfoot Louie? The next thing you would have asked me where I hid the body. Say, what's the matter with you? Do you think that I don't know you? You with your dark glasses? I knew you right away, Mr. Chameleon in disguise. A million a cop? Don't play innocent chameleon. I'm fed up to here. I can't take any more. Hannah, wait. Wait, you got me all wrong. I'm not chameleon. Put away that gun, Dominic. Put it away. Uh, I... Dominic, look at him. This isn't chameleon. Uh, stop saying that, Clara. It must be chameleon. Well, it's not. When you take off his dark glasses, you can see it's not. He... What's that? Look, it's only the doorbell, Dominic. Stop jumping out of your skin every time there's a sound. Dominic, let me in. It's McGrath. What does he want? More trouble, I suppose. I'm jinxed, I tell you. Hello, Mac. Shut the door. What's the matter with your telephone, Dominic? I've been calling you for an hour. Got nothing but a busy signal. I took the receiver off the hook. Well, that's just fine. I wanted to tell you one of the boys was coming over. Harry Marvin from Chicago. Harry Marvin? When he was on the level. What do you mean? Who's that on the floor? Why, it's Harry. Dominic, he's dead. Yes. Dominic shot him. He thought he was chameleon in disguise. What? You murdered one of your own men? One of your. I own... thought he was chameleon in disguise. Didn't you hear her? Yeah, I heard her. What a story this'll be to tell the boys what's left of them. If there's anybody left besides me, I'm staying here tonight. What for? Dominic needs a keeper. Next thing you know, I'll be running to Chameleon, telling him what happened to Clubfoot Louie. Oh, I'd never do that. That would be the end. You're right, Dominic. That would be the end for all of us. Go upstairs, try to get some sleep. I can't sleep. There's someone whistling the tune that Clubfoot Louie is to whistle. And there's a voice keeps saying, Dominic killed me. Dominic murdered me. I tell you, it's Louis's voice. The guy is hunting me. Clara. Clara heard the voice, too. Didn't you, Clara? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. I heard it, too, Mac. Well, then you're both of you bats. Go upstairs, will you? I'll get rid of Harry's body. And, Dominic, try not to dream about Clubfoot Louie. Dominic. Dominic. Go away, I tell you. I must have been dreaming again. I. Louis! Clubfoot Louis! Yeah, Dominic. Here I am. You should have known I'd come back. No, I'm still dreaming. No, you're not dreaming, Dominic. I come back from the dead. And I keep on coming back. I can't rest. I can't rest. Clara, come here. Uh, no use calling. you never be rid of me, Dominic. I can't rest while I'm without a decent barrier. I can't rest. Clara! Dominic. Dominic, what is it? Clara, can you see him? Clubfoot Louis, standing right over there. No. no. I can't see him. You... You can't see him? I can't see anyone. Dominic, you've been dreaming. Then I can't wake up because he's standing right there. Sure I am, Dominic. But only you can see me. There's nothing there, Dominic. Believe me. And I'm losing my mind. I can see him. It's Clubfoot Louis. Everything about him. His, his eyes, his hair, the color of his skin. And his Clubfoot, it's Louis. Sure, Dominic. I'm Clubfoot Louis. What do you want? What do you want? I want a decent burial. Take my body out of that hiding place. Give me a decent burial. But, but I can't. The cops are after me. Chameleon is after me. 
We buried you under the floor of the greenhouse. And if we take you out... Dominic, are you crazy? Mac. Mac is here. Clubfoot Louie is here. He's come back from the dead to haunt me. He's haunting me now. Now I know that you're... The... Dominic, it's true. Clubfoot Louie is here. You mean that you can see him too? Yeah. I'm sure he's standing right over there. It's Louie's ghost. And he can't rest until he has a decent burial. No. no. I don't believe it. I don't believe in ghosts. This may look like Louie, but he's flesh and blood and a bullet will fix him. Oh, 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 oh. Mac! Mac! He's dead, Dominic. This is one ghost who was quicker on the draw than he was. What? He was quite right about one thing. I'm only flesh and blood and his bullet would have fixed me. Chameleon! You're Chameleon! You're not Clubfoot Louie at all! You're Chameleon the Cop! And you're a superstitious fool, Dominic. I counted on that. I knew I could. Clara! Clara, you've got a gun. Keep him covered while I get away. Sorry, Dominic. You're the one I'm keeping covered. And her name isn't Clara. It's Madeline Evans. She's one of the cleverest operators we have at Central Headquarters. She's a detective, too? Yes, Dominic, with a fake prison record. It was Mr. Chameleon's idea that I try to get a job with you as your secretary. And you fell for it, Dominic. I don't blame you. Madeline's beautiful as well as clever. Well, poor Clubfoot Louie will be laid to rest once we've dug his body up from under the floor of your greenhouse. And you, Dominic, can be charged with not one murder but two. Harry Marvin's as well as Clubfoot Louie's. The innocent must be protected and the guilty must be punished. And it's amazing how the guilty usually keep convicting themselves. And with these words, Mr. Chameleon concludes tonight's murder case. Here's how to relieve a common early morning headache quickly. Instantly you get up, take two Bayer aspirin tablets with water, and chances are by the time you finish dressing, your headache is gone. Bayer aspirin works quickly because it starts to disintegrate within two seconds after you take it. You can see this amazing two-second disintegrating action with your own eyes by dropping a Bayer aspirin tablet in a glass of water. What it does in the water, it does in your stomach. And because it's ready to go to work almost at once, you get really fast relief. In addition, you get dependable relief. Of all pain relievers, none can match Bayer Aspirin's record of use by millions of normal people without ill effect. So be sure to buy Bayer Aspirin. Get the 100-tablet bottle, and you get Bayer Aspirin tablets for less than a penny apiece. Listen next Wednesday night at this same time for Mr. Chameleon, the man of many faces, in The Orphanage Murder Case. The part of Mr. Chameleon is played by Carl Swenson, with dialogue by Marie Balmer from the original story by Frank and Ann Hummert. Music directed by Victor Arden. Your announcer is Howard Claney. After years of work, a revolutionary new toothpaste has been developed called Lion's Toothpaste. By actual laboratory tests on scores of individual teeth, it gets teeth two and a half to five and a half times brighter than any of the five leading brands. Brighter by far than any other toothpaste. New Lion's Toothpaste does this because it's a new kind of toothpaste with a formula that's completely new and radically different. A remarkable toothpaste that cleans without soap and polishes without chalk. Try it. Ask for Lion's Toothpaste. Listen for Mr. Chameleon in The Orphanage Murder Case next Wednesday night at this time. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>